And welcome everybody to the Damage Doctor Show right here on TruthRadioShow.com. So we are doing a comprehensive, in-depth study of the book of Matthew in the series here. So we start here with Matthew chapter 4. So if you missed 1 to 3, it is in the playlist here. So again, we'll try to go through the entire book of Matthew and pull out the context of the book. Pull out the context of the verse. Pull out the context of the message that the Holy Spirit intends us to learn. So, like always, we encourage you guys to open the Bible yourself. So, open the book of Matthew, chapter 4, and we want you to read this for yourself. And the Bible says to challenge every spirit. So, if I say something wrong, I want you to challenge me on that. Put it in the description in the comments. I'm sorry. Put in the comments or the, um, the live chat, whatever the case. So, what we're going to do again, um, it's an in-depth, comprehensive study. So, first of all, we're going to start off with prayer. And Heavenly Father, we pray to you. Thank you for everything, and um, Jesus, please forgive us of our sins and any trespasses we committed, and make us right before the Father. We ask you to help us and, and install the Holy Spirit upon us, the, the Comforter, to help us learn and understand and comprehend your word. So um, here we go with the book of Matthew, and again, uh, Matthew chapter 4. So if you guys got a Bible, please open it up. If you don't, um, just pause this, whatever the case and um, open up the Bible for yourself. So we always encourage people to do this because it is extremely important. So here we go, Book of Matthew, chapter four. So again, what we do is like it's a you know like when you go to churches or I mean people pick up a magazine or book, they just skim through the book. So basically, you go to any website just about or you know YouTube, they have all kinds of things that read the Bible for you. That's not what we're doing today. We're not going to go, oh, blah, 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 all the way through uh, just reading the words without talking about them. So we're going to get into deep, in-depth discussion. That's what we do here. That's the purpose of this video. Because I'm sure if you just want to hear the Bible, just to hear it, there's many other people who could read it a million times better than me. That's not what we're here for. Again, we're here to learn. So take your time, each verse, absorb the context of the verse. And that's what we're going to do. So let's just start off here, guys. And uh, so then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. So Jesus went into the wilderness and he was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. So basically, this was a test, basically, to, <laughs> and uh, a strong test at that. So and when he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward in hunger. So. Yeah, he's so, uh, now he's hungry. It's been 40 days, 40 nights. He's hungry, he's thirsty, the whole nine yards, right? So, and when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to be made to bread. So, who's the tempter? You know, let's find out who the tempter was. And Satan, because it goes on to explain it's Satan. So, you always let the Bible interpret itself. Let Scripture interpret Scripture. Because if you ask um, 10 different pastors and priests who the tempter is, they're probably going to come up with uh, several different interpretations. But when you read the thing in its context, that's why we always suggest, too, again, if somebody throws a verse at you, I highly recommend and encourage you to read the verse in its context. That could be the paragraph or chapter, because one verse, ten to, you know, give it to 10 different people, you're going to have 10 different interpretations. But if you um, have those 10 people read that verse in this context, again, it's the paragraph of the chapter or how long that context may be, you, all 10 people would have the same conclusion. Then there's no you know, no need to interpret it because the Bible just did it for you. That's the very importance of doing this stuff. Yeah. So when the tempter came to him, that's Satan, and he said, if you're the son of God, command the stones to be made to bread. Because, again, Jesus was hungry. And Jesus answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of his mouth of God. Out of the mouth of God. So, and this goes a long way too. Okay, so it is written. So this key context right here, it is written. So, because a lot of today's churches, right, and I'm going to bring this up real quick. A lot of today's churches, they'll say, don't worry about the Old Testament. Which is why. And then a lot of these modern day dispensationals especially. Just read Matthew the Revelation. That's all you're supposed to do, right? No. You, you, you cannot possibly grasp the concept of the Old New Testament unless you know the Old. Because here's the thing. How many times is Jesus... We're going to find out as we go through the scriptures, okay? Um, how many times does Jesus say, as it is written? That's referring to the Torah. The book of Daniel and such. 
All right, so if you don't know what was written in the Old Testament, you're not going to know what Jesus is talking about. So the Old Testament goes along with the New. If you don't know the Old, you're not going to know the New. That's the way it goes, plain and simple. Regardless of what your ministry tells you. So once again, he says, um, again, the tempter came to him and said, If you're the Son of God, command those stones to be made to bread. But Jesus answered him said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, and by, but by every word that proceeded out the, of the mouth of God. That's the word of God. Then the devil, now here's where the scripture interprets itself. When I said that, um, the tempter, the tempter here, it goes on to find who the tempter is. The devil, Satan, whatever you want to call him. Okay, that's who the tempter is. See, when you read things in this context, you can see we didn't need to, uh, I didn't come up with my interpretation when I said it's Satan. That wasn't my interpretation. That's what the scripture says. So, and again, you take one verse, right? And you're going to have 10 different people have probably several different interpretations of who the tempter is. But if you want to read uh, the next couple of verses up, you learn it's the devil. So, um, then the devil taken him up into the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple. So, we're at some high place at this point, all right? At the pinnacle of the temple. And he said unto him, If you're the son of God, cast yourself down. For it is written, now this is Satan trying to mock Jesus. Now he's saying, oh, because uh, Satan told him, for it is written, right? Now this is Satan trying to tell Jesus, cast yourself down, for it is written. He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up. Lest any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. So this is, um, in, you know, modern day English is saying, <laughs> yeah, throw yourself off this cliff. And for it's written that angels are going to protect you. And that you won't even dash your foot against a rock. In other words, you're not going to be harmed. All right? This is Satan, you know, coming back at him, saying, you know, what it is written. You know what I mean? Which the Bible does say that about the thing as Jesus said uh, to him. It is written again. Thy shall not tempt the Lord thy God. Don't tempt the Father. Plain and simple. And this is the Son of God. He's even saying, I'm not going to tempt the Father. So here we are, two temptations already. Uh, it's like, oh yeah, well, won't you make that bread into stone if you're hungry? Completely mocking Jesus, right? And Jesus answers uh, back to him says, no. Man shall not live by bread alone. And you were supposed to live by the word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And the devil took him up to a high place in the holy city. And sat him up on the pinnacle of the temple and said, hey, if you throw yourself down, you know, jump off this. And it is written that the angels will, will, that are in charge of you will protect you. And not even, uh, uh, your foot won't even dash a stone. And Jesus told him, saying, no, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So see how important it is, context, guys? Context is very key in this, all right? And again, if you didn't know the Old Testament, you wouldn't know half the stuff what it means, really, what it really means, you know. And again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and sheweth him all, shows him all the kingdoms of the world and glory of them. So, and here's the thing, right? And this, this is, you know, this is so much comes out of this one verse right here. So the devil took, you know, let's, let's see where we are now, right? The devil took, um, uh, Jesus up on this high mountain that showed all the kingdoms of the world. And then people say, oh, how, how could, there's not a mountain out there you can see all the kingdoms of the world. Well, hold on a second. Hold on. Because uh, this is where we go into some, um, you know, figuratively and literally, right? People say then this is figuratively speaking because it's impossible. You go to any mountain in the world, you can go to the biggest skyscrapers and you can't see all the kingdoms of the earth. You can't. Absolutely. So is this figuratively? No. Because people quickly forget. They quickly forget because you're what they're doing, right? By saying this is figuratively, right? And not literally. Yes, if me, you, and everybody else went up to a high east mountain world, we go on Mount Everest, we could not see all the kingdoms of the earth. We go to the tallest building, even with binoculars and a telescope, we, we could not see all the kingdoms of the earth. So is this figuratively or literally? And this is a lot of churches. Oh, this is just figuratively speaking. 
No, it's not. Because, again, what you're doing, by you saying that and thinking that, what you're doing is you're putting... Now, you got to remember, Satan, okay, he's one of God's biggest angels, all right? The most beautiful angels he ever created, right? And Jesus, the Son of God. So what you're doing is you're putting these two supernatural beings with the limitations of mankind, the limitations we have. So this is not figuratively, okay? This is literally... They, these, you remember again. These are supernatural beings. They don't have the limitations we have. They can literally see, literally, not figuratively, literally see every kingdom across the planet. That's over in another continent somewhere, whatever. They can literally see that. These are supernatural beings you're talking about. We cannot put our mindset into that of the, with the limitations we have. And this is um, this runs into a big list of problems, man. Ministries, pastors, and all that. Like, if for some reason they have this mindset, this is only figuratively speaking. No, it's literally. This is literally happening. Okay, and uh, so Jesus and um, Satan are literally up on the mountain, and they have literally seen the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And now we go into the glory of them. So they are literally seeing the, the, everything, all the splendor that these kingdoms are, everything about them. This is spiritual, supernatural stuff. Now, much as like uh, much as I study all that, human beings can't fully comprehend all this. And unless you have a good understanding of spiritual warfare, you're not going to get this. And people say, "Well, this is you know, figuratively speaking," because once again, you you set yourselves in the minds of men. The limitations of man. This is not limited by man. This is supernatural powers, guys. So they are literally seen in the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And he said to him, All these things I will give thee, and I will fail fall down and worship me. So I'm sorry, all these things, this is Satan telling Jesus. All these things I will give you, and if you will fall down and worship me. So this is Satan, okay, telling Jesus, listen, see all the beautiful kingdoms of the earth, all the splendor, all the beauty, and the glory of them, okay? I will give those to you. And people will say, well, how, how could Satan give them to him? Because, well, here's the thing. Once again, if you know the Old Testament, you will learn that Satan is the prince of this world until Jesus returns. He's given dominion on earth uh, for a certain limitation. Yeah, this is where the limited limitations are. Yeah, Satan's got limitations that God set for him, okay? <laughs> uh, that he could do things, but it's only according to God's will and if God allows it to happen. Like when they tempted Job, remember that? If Satan had his way, he would have killed Job. We all know that. But God allowed him to tempt him because he was mocking God. Hey, go ahead, tempt him. He's my faithful... One of my most faithful servants. Go ahead, tempt him. And he allowed Satan to do all that stuff to him. And Job told him, no, I'm not blaming God. Didn't blame God once. Lost his family and all. He knew what was going on. Didn't blame God. He kept his faith in the Lord. And the Lord says, see, after all those tests and trials and tribulations you put him through, he still loves me. And then he gave Job back tenfold of everything he had. And probably the numerous crowns in the, in the kingdom of God. So this is what we're looking at here, guys. This, this is a temptation by the Satan. And he's telling uh, Jesus, I'll give, I'll give you the world if you just worship me. And yes, he could have gave him the world. Absolutely. And um, Jesus told him, get thee hence, Satan, get behind me. Plain and simple, that's what it means. Get thee hence, Satan, get behind me. For it is written, once again, for it is written, reciting scripture, reciting the Torah, reciting the old stuff. Thou shalt worship the Lord God in him only, thou shalt serve. Referring to what? What is this? The first commandment. So it is written, so this is Jesus referring to the Torah. Jesus referring to you know, the, the, the sick, sick potters, um, the today's church. Oh, the Torah is oh, it's only Jews. It's only the commandments are only for the Jews. No. Why would Jesus say that then? It is written, and this is the first commandment he's talking about. You shall only worship the Lord thy God in him only. 
That's the first commandment. There is no other gods before me. And you shall love the God, Lord God with all your heart. So as it is written, referring back to the Torah. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. And now when Jesus had heard John was cast into prison, now we're going to another scenario here. So basically, after all this temptation, 11 verses here, several times Jesus, um, sorry, uh, Satan tempted Jesus. First, uh, to turn the rock into stone. Second, uh, to throw himself off uh, the, the roof. And third, I'll make, you know, you worship me, I'll give you the world. And what Jesus kept saying, hell, oh, it is written, you shall not tempt the Lord thy God, plain and simple. Stop tempting the Father. And most of all, I don't worship, he said, plain and simple. He said, get behind me, Satan, because it is written. This is the Ten Commandments, so the Ten Commandments are not just for the Jews, okay? The ten, Jesus followed the Ten Commandments, because if he didn't, why would he say this? Because the first commandment, you shall not worship any other God but the Lord thy God himself. There it is right there. Then Satan left him, and behold, because Satan was just disgusted. He's like, all right, I'm, I'm not breaking this guy. And, you know, I'm not breaking him, plain and simple. And yes, Satan was the son of God. Absolutely. And, and, and you know, not in a good way. Because uh, Satan ended up rebelling against God. So all the angels are sons of God. Remember, keep remember we discussed in the last chapter. Uh, that Jesus is God's only begotten son. God has many sons. Jesus is the only begotten son. In other words, the only one that was ever born in the flesh. Satan's the son. So that would make them spiritual brothers. So Satan's trying to tempt his brother here. Hey, listen, come over to the dark side if you want to put it that way. That's what, what's going on here. But Jesus is his only begotten son. All right, the only one that's ever been born in the flesh. And of course, Jesus, you know, before that, again, we have to stay this all the time. Because a lot of Christians think that Jesus just came into existence when he was born from Mary. No, he was here before the world. We don't even know how long he's been here. Because he's God in the flesh, you know what I mean? And manifested in the flesh. He just manifests himself in the flesh to come into this reality to die for our sins. So him in the, being in the mortal flesh, this is Satan trying to tempt him. So the devil left him alone, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Rejoicing because like, he just uh, resisted all this temptation by the prince of this world. Satan. So now switching gears here. Now when uh, Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. So he went right as soon as he heard about G, uh, John, he went right to Galilee to see what was going on. And now in leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt with the Capernaum, which is upon the sea coast, and the borders of Zabuan and Nephilim. It sounds like Nephilim, but Nephilim. Okay, I'm not perfectly uh, be able to pronounce all these uh, names here, but I'll do my best. So, and that it might be fulfilled that which was uh, spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying that the land of Zubalon and the land of Nephilim, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. So once again, we got um, Isaiah, Isaiah, I'm sorry, the prophet. Uh, being talked about, yeah. And it was mentioned in chapter 3 as well. And so this was prophecy being fulfilled uh, that he spoke of, that when the Messiah came, these things would happen. He spoke of when he would happen, and right in chapter 1 we learned about that too, when Jesus was born, that it was a prophecy from Isaiah's prophet saying when and how he would come. And this is prophecy being fulfilled, long, you know, thousands of years prophecy being fulfilled, uh, the coming of the Messiah. So the land of Zubalon and the land of Nepathon by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. And the people which sat in the darkness saw great light. And to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light has sprung up. So what does this mean? 
people sat in the darkness. Is it because they're sitting in the dark in the dark cave or they void in the sunlight or anything? No, this people sat in darkness, which which would indicate that they're evil people. The the people do bad things and all that. So they saw this great light, and who's the light? What light did they see? Did they see? You know, of course they see lights every day, like lamps and the sun come up. That's not what it's talking about. And they saw a great light, specified great light. What is that great light? Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, the earth was without form and there was darkness. It said, let there be light. <laughs> the light was Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah, the Lord of Spirits. Uh, again, uh, four days before the sun, and uh, sun, moon, and stars were uh, created, the light was Jesus, plain and simple. And when you read the scripture, let scripture interpret scripture. Jesus is the light, the way, the truth. No man comes to the Father except for through Jesus. Gee, and that way you see light associated with Jesus. So, you talk about some wicked people here, the sat in darkness, that they were wicked people. They saw a great light. And to them that sat in the region of the shadow of death, light, up, light is a spring up. And that's Jesus. He, that's Jesus came into them. So, uh, the, and these people walked in darkness. That's what it's saying. And Jesus come to them. And from that time, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So we heard this before. For Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Does that mean it? Yeah, it's tomorrow. It's whatever the case. No, with that in that context, of what that means is basically if you die right now, it doesn't matter if uh, the tribulation happens a thousand years, uh, two thousand, five thousand years from then, didn't matter. If you died, you're not guaranteeing your next breath. So if you died in the next minute, yeah, the kingdom of heaven will be at hand, and you will miss the boat. Place and plain and simple. Repent, okay, and this is a very key, important word, repent. That means to turn away from. Don't do it again. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren. It's uh, Simon called Peter and Andrew, his brother. Remember, Simon was, um, became Peter. And Andrew, his brother, cast the net into the sea because they were fishermen. Because they were fishers, yeah. And he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make yourselves fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed them. So this is Simon uh, Peter and Angel, his brother. You know, professional, uh, yeah, that's what they did for a living. Catching fish or a fisherman, right? And Jesus told him, like, just drop your nets. I'll make you a fisher of men. Follow me. And they did exactly just that. So once again, they dropped the nets and just followed them. You know what I mean? And uh, and going from thence and saw two other brethren, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother. So he went and gathered two sets of brothers. Uh, Peter and Andrew, his brother there, and also James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. And a ship with uh, Zebedee, their father, amended the nets uh, and called them. So this is uh, the father mending nuts and all that. So they were, you know, working. That's what that means. And um, and they immediately left the ship and their father and followed them. So, <laughs> so the father's mending nets and they're getting ready to go cast out and get some fish and all that. And now you just had four fishermen just, yep, I'm done with fishing. Yep, I'm going to follow Jesus. Left everything to go follow Jesus, which is awesome. And Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in the synagogues. And preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing in all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. So this is uh this is big, you know what I mean? And uh the, you know the thing is these disciples, as you learn later on, Jesus making these people disciples. Um, they've already known of Jesus, and then being of course they're like, you know, I'm gonna follow the Son of God. I'm gonna chop my life, and I'm gonna go become an apostle for Jesus, which is an honor. I mean, <laughs> it's not that many people have got to do that, you know. So, um, and they went to Galilee teaching in the synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, just going telling everybody that had the ear to hear about the gospel. And healing all manner of sickness and all manner of the disease among people. So people with diseases and sicknesses, they came to get healed. And um, his fame went through all of Syria. And they brought unto him all sick people 
that were taken with diverse diseases in torment, and those which were uh, possessed with devils, and those which were a lunatic, and those which had palsy, which um, we call today cerebral palsy, whatever, and they healed them. So look at this, right? And let's just dive into this, right? Look at the people he was healing. Diverse diseases, that's uh, just, a, it could be anything. That's what that means. It's, uh, uh, you know, all kinds of diseases and torments. So basically if they had uh, skin irritations, which is torment, you know what I mean, or you're going through some kind of an episode or whatever the case, you know what I mean, it's, it's torment, plain and simple. And those who were possessed with devils, okay, people possessed, okay. And the thing is, today's churches don't take themselves seriously, you know what I mean? Oh, it's, um, you know, psychological issues, whatever. No, there are possessed people out there. And, of course, psychological, we talk about lunatics, okay. This is also a spiritual attack. Or somebody just, uh, you know, becomes crazy because they witnessed something tragic in their life that, traumatized them, you know what I mean? So it's got to knock a few screws loose, you know? So this is who Jesus healed. He healed these people that had traumatic experiences, probably whatever made them uh, flip their switch, you know what I'm saying? And he uh, healed people, uh, removed the demons out of people. And back then, especially, there was tons. Of, because remember, Jesus just come on the earth now. So before Jesus, you can say, oh, in the name of Jesus, remove these uh, demons from me. So imagine the amount of people that were possessed by them. Back then, I'm sorry. And also the people who had palsy and healed them. So just by anybody who was sick, possessed, or anything like that, they were healed by Jesus. And his fame, yeah, he went to all Syria. So everybody in their mother that had anything like a sickness or anything like that, or you know, people who possessed their family members would drag them all the way to see Jesus. So, and there followed him great multitudes of people. That's what I just uh, explained in here, too. Great multitudes of people. People coming from everywhere. And multitudes of people from Galilee and the uh, Decapolis and Jerusalem. And from Judea and from beyond Jordan. So, people from everywhere. That's what it's saying. In the area in the Middle East over there, people everywhere are flooding to go see Jesus. To get healed, to get... Um, from sicknesses, diseases, and torments, and all kinds of stuff, man. Just say you have uh, poison ivy, right? And it's really, you know, your face is puffed up, you're itchy, and all that. That's torment. Some That's what would be explained what a torment is. Or uh, just say, uh, whatever, you got irritated by some soap or something, your body breaks out. I had that happen to me. If I use, like, uh, certain perfume soaps, uh, perfume stuff in it, it would make me break out and get itching all over the place. It's horrible. I mean, it's torment, trust me. You know, stuff like that as well. You know what I mean? It could be anything. You know, who knows? But um, this is what he did. He went around just healing people, uh, uh, casting demons out of people and all that. And again, back then, the demonic possession was huge. Because remember, Jesus was just starting to spread his gospel back then. Now today, we can easily help people that are demonically possessed. And you don't need to be a deliverance minister or a Catholic priest or anything like that. No, just um, somebody who's right. And I always suggest people to do this too. Before you attempt to do that, I would, number one, get right with the Lord. Confess all unknown, unknown sins. Guys, trust me when I tell you, these people who possess, it's the devils in them. That will bring up the sins that you've, uh, you have unconfessed sins. They will bring that up to you. It happened to me, okay? Trust me when I tell you. Yeah, so you got to know what you're walking into. You know what I mean? Confess all your sins because they can't hold those against you no more. And they're going and forgotten about after that. And also, get right with the Lord, like I said. And um, you need to call upon Holy Spirit and cast them out in the name of Jesus. Not your glory, it's for his glory. If you can remember those things and keep the faith, no matter what you hear or say from these things, keep the faith in Jesus and you'll be successful. Because remember, it's the whole he who is in you is greater than all the world. And who's that? That's the Holy Spirit. Because Jesus explained uh, later on, we'll see in the, uh, the te context here, the, I'm sorry, the scripture uh, during these studies, you're going to see that Jesus uh, told us to, he's going to send us another comforter. Because he, when he was here on the earth, he was our comforter. And he goes, when I leave to go back home, basically, he's going to send us another comforter. And that other comforter is the Holy Spirit. And I think that's the book of First John. So, uh, but we'll learn that eventually. But um, this is why I just wanted to go over. So, and today we learned um, it's very cool. You know what I mean? Say so, again, like I said earlier, we could go 
to any, you know, these Bible websites, whatever, and or a Bible apps, you just hit play and you just read to the calling. Anybody could do that. I mean, uh, you know, they could read it 10 times better than me, more elegant than I can, or more articulate. But what I try to do is break down everything to put you in that scenario, to see what he was dealing with, what he, what was going on. This is what we try to do. And this is called studying scripture. And, uh, you know, normally if you read all the time, right, you can read through this chapter. This chapter is only uh, 25 verses. How long would it take you to read through that if you just read through it, right? Two minutes, maybe? That's not what it's about. Take your time. Slow it down. I don't care if you can read speed read, okay? You're not going to comprehend everything that's in here. You need to break down every verse, study it, and, you know, just absorb it and, like, put yourself in that situation. Put yourself in that, you know, where are they? What are they doing? You know, and, and all that. And if you can't understand stuff, like a word or something, I would look at the definition for it. Try it on, you know, and it brings out a different meaning and understand it. So don't skip something you don't understand. Stop, okay? And try to learn what it is. And the Bible explains itself, as we talked about with the tempter, right? And if we just stopped at the tempter, right? And what I was saying earlier. Well, verse 3 there, and the tempter. If we just read that one verse, I just read verses 1, 2, and 3, right? Which actually... Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? The context, okay? The, and this is a perfect example, right? Now, what is, one more time, the domain sound redundant, right? So basically somebody says, oh, verse 3, uh, Matthew 4, 3, uh, the tempter, right? So they could say, um, I don't know, uh, Lucifer, which is, uh, he's not Satan, it's a different entity. Lucifer is the tempter, right? And they could say, oh, look, uh, the tempter uh, came to Jesus and said to him, and, you know, the They'll be the son of God, command the, the stones to be made to bread, right? If you read that, it's, we can all day long, the people could have different interpretations who the tempter is. But if you have common sense, you already know who it is. But when you read it in its context, right, that's the context. Just, you know, in the context, you can already see established right in the first one, it's the devil. And then again, verse 8, uh, the devil. So you can see who's tempting them, and you can see the tempter is the devil. Plain and simple. So we establish that, and then when you let the Bible, this is what I'm talking about, let the Scripture interpret Scripture. So if we would just read verse 3, it could be open for interpretation, yes. If you didn't know any better, you read verse 3, it could be open for interpretation who the tempter is, because it doesn't say it. But when you read in this context, it's clear as day who the tempter is. It's Satan. <laughs> the devil there. Clear as day. So that's um, that's the stuff we're talking about, too. You know what I mean? And it's so important to understand the key words and, and who you're talking about. You know what I mean? And if you don't understand right away, it's going to explain itself in the, in the context. And that's what Bible scoffers, they work on this all the time. And the thing is, they know most people don't know the Bible. Yeah, you know, they'll know it to a fact that they can read to it, maybe memorize some verses. But they don't know it and know it. You know what I mean? So they can easily just say, you know, use this, for example, pull out uh, verse 3. And, you know, they can say, oh, the tempter, and this is how they do it. This is strategically how they do it. And false ministries do the same thing, right? So they'll take verse 3, right, and the tempter, right? Even before you get a chance to look at, you know, the next verse or whatever the case, right, or the rest before, they'll throw you off right away. Oh, no, 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 no. The tempter is this. If you go to, uh, just say, Genesis 5-1, and if you go to Revelation 4-1, or uh, um, uh, Luke chapter 4, uh, uh, you know, chapter 10, verse 8, you know what I mean? So they'll string you Bible verses all along to misinterpret that verse. Do you get where I'm coming from? So churches do this all the time. They, they, um, they'll they bring up a verse that sounds like something they're talking about. And they'll string together a bunch of verses to make it fit their agenda, what they're talking about. But when you stop for a second, say, all right, before you give me those other verses, stop. Hold on a second. They don't want you to do that. No. So, Instead of listening to their interpretation, who the, the tempter is, and then they're going to throw a million other verses, frog hop all over the Bible to make you wait. Hold on. You say, stop for a minute before you stop misinterpreting more verses. Let me find out what the tempter is because let the scripture interpret scripture. Context is key. If you remember these two things, you'll never be deceived, guys.
Now we can learn we don't need to, uh, a priest or a pope or any of these clowns out there or a Bible scholar to tell us who the tempter is. You can clearly see it's Satan, the devil. <laughs> Read it in its context. That's very important, guys. So you do not be deceived. And let the Holy Spirit teach you. I say this all the time. I'm going to keep saying it. So uh, there's not a Bible academy, not a Bible school, not a college or a university or a church in the world that could teach you the word of God. Not one. That diploma or degree on your wall means absolutely nothing to the Lord. The Holy Spirit is the only teacher. Even Charles Spurgeon talked about this all the time. In his book, uh, Holy Spirit Power, he said the Holy Spirit is the only teacher. Jesus never instructed us at all. Never. When he left, he, he said, I'm going to send you a comforter. Did he say go to a church or a synagogue? No. Did he say go to um, uh, a temple? Did he say go to a pope or whatever? No, he never said no such thing. He said the comforter is going to be the Holy Spirit. He's the divine teacher. Plain and simple. So let the scripture interpret scripture and read it in its context. So we just did that with the book of Matthew chapter 4. So uh, we're going to put out... Uh, chapter 5 real soon. So guys, just uh, go to truthradioshow.com and you'll be able to uh, keep up with all the stuff. And uh, if you subscribe to our channels, we got multiple channels. So if you go to truthradioshow.com, you can keep up with it better or just subscribe to the channels and you'll get the notifications. And trust the Bible, guys. Just the Bible. Not any other doctrine. Not the Catechism. Not the Book of Mormon. Not the Quran. None of that. Trust the Bible only. Sound doctrine. So don't take somebody else's word for it. Read it for yourselves, plain and simple. So if you like the context, guys, we want to support this ministry. We got a PayPal, we got a Venmo, we got a Cash App. Three different ways to support this ministry. And guys, uh, I hate putting this up because I don't want to sound like a minister uh, out there. Those people like Joel seem all like, oh, give me all your money. No, it's not about that. And if you do uh, give, guys, give with the right hand and left hand knows nothing about it. You know, pray to the Father for us, and you know, let the Father decide for you. You know, plain and simple. It all does is it funds the operation, pays for our studio and the equipment we need and the streaming on some services we do. That's all it does. So try to get the show better because we do a news broadcast. We do a, uh, special videos, special reports, documentaries. And we do awesome Friday nights, uh, Spiritual Warfare Friday, uh, where we cover in-depth topics, where we just uh, expose the deeds of evil, as Ephesians 5 says, to know the enemy, expose them. Expose uh, secret societies, the occult. You know, people call it conspiracy things. Man. We expose all that stuff. You know what I mean? Where aliens are, UFOs are, what the Bible has to say about them. All kinds of stuff. Giants, uh, the flood. We get to biblical topics uh, that no uh, other churches do. And um, ourselves here and also NIC TV, uh, we cover all that stuff. So check out the content on NIC TV, guys. Uh, all the links are in the description for every one of these shows. And a uh, new show out there uh, with Brian Reese. It's called Visual Disturbance. That's in there, too. And also our brother Trey uh, Harris from Course Correction Radio. He's in there, too. So And also check out Jimmy Vision. So all the links are down below, guys. And um, if you subscribe to all these channels, man, it is so great. We have a family of shows that all to come together, uh, work together, and, you know, and just to bring out the biblical truth about stuff, you know what I mean? And yes, we cover stuff like Satanism. We cover stuff like witchcraft. We get into deep, dark um, information about it, but we expose it on an educational basis to show you what the stuff is about so you yourself don't be deceived, you know what I mean? And uh, and also mainly what the Bible has to say about it. You know, it's a big one, you know what I mean? So we got it all, guys, on this uh, these networks here. So please help support our operation and uh, join nystv.org. And it's a free uh, subscription for 30 days. Um, if you want to uh, join the network. so But all the shows are all, all free on YouTube and everything. It's just uh, the shows here are deleted because sometimes YouTube takes the shows down. They don't like it. Yeah, they take them down and it goes up on the uh, NYS TV network. And so, uh, and also check my website out, truthradioshow.com, where we, you know, expose the deeds of evil, plain and simple. And declare war in the New World Order because they've declared in you know, Satan's kingdom. That's what the New World Order is. And they declared war on us, a, you know, thousands of years ago. So we declare war on them with the uh, power of truth and the Holy Spirit and the gospel. So that being said, guys, uh, thank you for joining us on this uh, edition of the biblical series, a comprehensive study of Matthew chapter 4. So God bless, shalom, and remember, you are the resistance.